Once upon a time, there was a young farmer named Weiyu. Weiyu lived near the sticky, humid rainforest of northern Sumatra, supporting his family with the sweet bundles of corn that he sold. As Weiyu watered his tall crop one day, his wife, Zinta, patched a hole in his shorts that he'd torn the last time he'd worked in them. Their son, Putra, began to push his way into the cornfield to find his father. Putra begged to go to the market with him, putting on his best show of fluttering his dark lashes at Weiyu. They both knew Weiyu could not tell him no. At the market, the stalls were stacked high with brightly colored fruits, fresh vegetables, and fish caught just that morning. Weiyu kept his son close by his hand so he would not wander off. From the corner of his eye, Weiyu caught a glimpse of a box, pearly white poking out of the top. It was the smooth curve of an elephant's tusk, he realized, pricey ivory to be shipped overseas. A fat stack of rupiah was passed to the man selling the tusks. Weiyu looked away, leading Putra along from a sight he felt it best to pretend he had not seen. Harvest started early the next day. The sun only just began to crest over the horizon. The world was peaceful. Birds called to each other, beetles fluttered dew from their wings, and leaves unfurled to soak up the sun's rays. Suddenly, as if Mother Nature herself yawned, the morning's commotion grew silent. Whatever quieted the birds and stilled the beetles rumbled towards their farm. A giant moseyed out of the forest. It was a tall elephant, its eyes on his crop. Weyu scooped Putra into his arms and raced back to their home. From behind him, he heard a stalk snap. The beast's footsteps drew away after it had fed itself fat. Weiyu was left with nothing. What would they do? He remembered his trip to the market yesterday. Weiyu knew how they were going to make it. His father's rifle had gathered dust from disuse, but he ran inside to fetch it. He followed the path of destruction the massive elephant had left behind. Its form grew visible, and Weiyu ducked behind a thick tree trunk, disengaging the safety of his rifle. Suddenly, as if it knew he were there all along, the elephant swung around to stare up at the muzzle of the rifle at him. Birds left their spots in the trees when his shot rang out, ear-piercingly loud. They were even, way you figured on his way back, with enough rupiah to make up for what he'd lost and then some. His family was not interested in speaking with him for the rest of the day. His stomach felt heavy when they settled in for the evening without exchanging good nights. Way you awoke to sunlight hitting his face. He rose, his limbs sluggish feeling, and moved to stretch his arms before he realized he no longer had them. In their places were two unrecognizable legs, covered in stone-colored skin. Three other masses near him began to move. Darling, you must have had a bad dream. I'm here, one elephant just smaller than himself said. You're talking, Weyu exclaimed in disbelief. Of course we are, Papa, a young fuzzy elephant told him. The boy was poking out from behind an older elephant, spots of age dotting her body. Weyu had to explain to them that this was not his body, that he was a human with a family and he had to get back to them. The others seemed to mull it over before they introduced themselves to him. Jaya was the oldest, and her daughter was Batari. The small elephant went by Aggie. Weyu was in the body of Batari's husband, Aggie's father. Jaya, wise with age, knew where to take them. A shaman would surely know how to return the human to his body. They reassured Weyu they would not let him go alone. They had staken this too, after all. Jaya led them through the thicket of woods to a river nearby, and they stopped to drink. Aggie watched his mother drink beside him, when he suddenly smacked his stout little trunk against the water's surface to splash her. He bolted into the river, though Batari was already moving to chase him and douse him in revenge. Weyu laughed, comfortable on the edge. His rest was interrupted by Aggie shaking water all over it, and before he knew it, he was waiting in to join them. They followed the river up until they could no longer, and it reached a waterfall. Shea told them they were close. They pushed through a veil of flowers. There was the shaman, a little slow lorist named Nobby. Nobby the lorist waved Weyu to follow him, and he disappeared, scratching his belly absent-mindedly. You have invoked a powerful curse, Weyu, Nobby told him. Something has been robbed from another. When it has been returned to its rightful owner, I will be able to break your curse. The tusks, Weyu realized. He thanked Nobby, returning to the elephant family. They searched the forest for a camp until the sun had begun dipping below the horizon and they had found nothing. Aggie's tummy rumbled. When Batari went to find sweet fruits for the boy, she found only leaves that he spat out. Then her eyes fell upon something in the distance. Weyu peered past her and spotted a rice paddy. He stopped her. 
A human lived there. It was too dangerous, and Shea agreed. They had to turn in hungry, a feeling Wei Yu was familiar with. Shea awoke him the next morning, rousing him gently with her trunk. She'd found them food, but needed help carrying it back. Normally, my husband would help, Shea explained as they walked to the pile. He went to a human's land to get food for us, like you warned us not to yesterday, and he didn't return. We were going to stay a little while longer to see if he would, and then you came. Wei Yu's gut nodded up. He could find no words to soothe the old woman as they brought back the food she'd gathered. Their bellies were full, and everyone felt more energetic. When the sun was high in the sky, Wei Yu finally found it, a guarded camp dotted with dark green tents. He could see their spoils. Shea decided she would not let him go alone, no matter how much he protested. The pair drew close. They would rush the camp, grab what they needed, and go. But they were spotted. A human waved his arms to try and scare them away, but it was too late. Shea had moved to take the tusks in the open. Shea, no! We have to go! Wayu cried to her. They ran, but Shea slowed. A hot, scarlet liquid ran down her side, and Wayu stopped to help her the rest of the way, letting her body lean against his as they returned to the woods. Shea's breathing was heavy, despite the fact that she murmured reassurances she would be okay. Wayu knew she'd risked her life for his. He did not deserve this kindness, especially not after what he'd done to their family. Shea, I was the one who killed your husband. The words came of their own accord now, a desperate confession to her. It was me. I'm so sorry. I never should have done it, but I owned the farm he took from. I was so angry and I felt so helpless. I... She cut him off by placing her trunk upon his to silence him with a kind smile. Wei Yu, you are a good human. I have no doubt in my mind about that. You are part of this family now, too. And though I may never understand what it was like to be faced with that choice, I forgive you for what you have done, dear. When her breathing stilled, the forest grew silent. Batari asked Wei Yu to help gather flowers for her. She told him she could not forgive him, and the two broke into an argument. Wei Yu tried to explain his side of things, but they both fell silent at the same time suddenly. They looked around. Where had Aggie gone? They followed Aggie's cries. The little elephant had been trapped by the men at the camp, acting as living bait with his pleas for help. I'll lead the humans away from Aggie. When they leave, you must free him, Wei Yu told Batari. He stomped his heavy feet at the edge of the camp and pushed over skinny trees. Just as he predicted, the humans came to him. His eyes could not leave Aggie's mother as she bolted in to free him. Hearing the commotion, the poachers turned their attention from Wei Yu, rifles raised. He swiped at their small frames with his trunk, making their shots misfire. Only when Batari and Aggie were safe did he turn to join them. Papa! Er, Wei Yu! You looked so cool! Aggie praised. Batari stepped over to them. Wei Yu, thank you, she said. My mother was right. You are a good human. Truly, I'm sorry for what I said to you. They all knew they could not return to attempt for the tusks again. Wei Yu wasn't willing to risk hurting anyone else. Nabi will know what to do, surely, Batari offered, though she sounded uncertain. As the new matriarch of their troop, she would guide them. Wei Yu approached the clearing, his nerves gripping his heart as the plump little Loris emerged from his tree and climbed down. He broke the news to Nabi. He could not retrieve the tusks. He could not return what was stolen. Nabi silently stared for a few moments. Then he clapped his paws together. Was Aggie not taken? Did you not bring him back? The shaman pointed out. It was unclear how he knew. You did exactly as you were told, Wei Yu. Close your eyes and I will uphold my end of our bargain. Wei Yu opened his eyes, seeing a home he had never missed so much. Putra! Sinta! He yelled, racing across the yard and to their home. He held them both close, and his son and his wife exchanged puzzled glances, but he didn't care. He wasn't sure if he'd ever be able to hold them again, and he wasn't going to waste any chance he got. Wei Yu wanted to give Shea's husband a proper burial. When he found the tuskless elephant, however, a uniformed group had reached it first. He recognized the symbols on their jackets. They were part of a conservation effort. When questioned by one of the officers, Wei Yu revealed the location of the poacher's camp on a map, following the river to find the area Shea and Batari had guided him through. The other volunteers agreed to help Wei Yu bury the elephant with warm smiles. The officer contacted Wei Yu later on, after they'd successfully arrested the poachers. A few had gotten away, making the area near his farm at risk. This opened up a new opportunity for Wei Yu, the chance to protect his elephant family he had come to love while supporting his human one as a conservation officer. 
Wei Yu knew that because of his new life, his families would remain safe for many years to come.